Okay, opening I had their dev day, which we've been waiting for a long time to see what they were going to announce. Was it going to be new models? What, were there going to be new agents? A whole bunch of things. And they delivered on a lot of those things. So in this video, I'm just going to cover uh, some of the key aspects of it, and we'll go through the code for some of the key things in here. So for the assistance API, I'm going to make a separate video just going into that much more in depth. But if we look at the announcement that they had, the, one of the main things that they rolled out was this GPT-4 Turbo with 128K context window. This really allows us to go for very long inputs and then summarization, uh, question answering, a whole bunch of different things related around that. Along with this, both for the GPT-4 Turbo and the 3.5 Turbo have been updated for function calling updates and with this new JSON mode. So I'm going to go through the code in a bit and we'll have a look at all those things. Another thing that they've brought in is the ability to have reproducible outputs. So while that may not sound really sexy, it's definitely really good for debugging what's going on in your code and in your agents and stuff like that overall. They introduced a new version of GPT 3.5 Turbo. Again, this was mostly focused on improvements to outputting structured data like JSON, XML, etc. And like I said, one of the big things that they announced was this assistance API. Now I'll do a whole video just around these themselves of looking at how you can build the assistance, both with the tools on the platform and with code uh, for putting these together. And my guess is that you're going to see a lot of things from things like Langchain around these assistants as well. On top of those, we also had a bunch of things with new modalities. So supposedly end of 2023 and 2024 are going to be all about multimodality models. And sure enough, we've now got the GPT-V uh, model, at least to access to a version of it. So this is actually GPT-4 Turbo with Vision. Uh, so perhaps not as good as the, the full GPT-4 one. I'm not sure about that. But we've also got an API now to use for DALI. And we've got a text-to-speech uh, API, which was a, a nice surprise, I think, uh, for coming along for different voices and stuff like that. They've also announced that you're going to be able to do fine tuning for GPT-4, although that seems to be not available to everyone at the moment, and that you'll be able to do custom models if you're a big company or something like that, especially if you wanted to do, say, RLHF or other things that are a little bit more different than just pure supervised fine tuning training. Along with the, the new models, we've got new pricing for the models. So the GPT-4 Turbo is basically half the price for output tokens and a third the price for input tokens if compared to the 8k model and obviously a lot cheaper if compared to the full 32k model on top of that gpt 3.5 turbo has gotten a lot cheaper really taking this to the open source models if your main concern is cost there are lots of reasons for using open source models but contrary to what a lot of people say on YouTube, these models are not free. If you want to put them into production and run them at scale, they're going to cost you some uh, decent money to actually run them and serve them uh, and be able to deliver lots of tokens from them. So OpenAI, again, reducing their prices. So let's jump into the code and have a look at what is actually out now. Okay, so one of the first things that you will notice is that the OpenAI package now has been updated. So you want to make sure that you're using 1.1.1 for this currently. And that brings with it actually a number of different changes in regards to things of like, how do you actually instantiate the models and do the completions as well? So if we look at like a basic GPT-4 Turbo completion, we instantiate a client from OpenAI, passing in our API key there. And then for completions, we're going to use client.chat.completions.create. And into that, you're going to pass in your messages where you could pass in a system user, pass in your role and your content. And these are going to be just like a list of dictionaries in here where you could have role system, role user, that kind of thing. So to kick it off, I thought I'd you know, ask it about some events in January 2023. Surprisingly, I went through a lot of these events. I didn't recognize a lot of them. Uh, I did see that, okay, it said that that's when Jacinda Ardern announced her resignation. So I did a quick Google search, and sure enough, uh, it seems like that's correct. It does seem that the knowledge has been updated a lot. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to 
uh, totally prevent hallucinations. There'll probably still be some hallucinations for things. But if we compare that to, say, even the new 3.5 turbo model, uh, and I ask it here, you know, okay, what happened for Jacinda Ardern in January 23 gives me a nice list of hallucinations or things that were perhaps partially true, but uh, it doesn't mention anything about her resignation uh, in here. So clearly, if you want something that's going to be up to date uh, a lot more uh, than the previous models, go for the GPT-4 Turbo in here. Another nice thing that got introduced to both the 3.5 and the 4 Turbo uh, is this idea of JSON mode. So what this allows you to do is basically pass in uh, the response format as being a JSON object. And as long as you pass in a system message as well that mentions the, the word JSON in here, it will basically guarantee that it's going to deliver back JSON. Now, you may have trouble if the reason for the stopping in generation was uh, a limited number of tokens, then you're only going to get half your JSON message. But apart from that, you should get your JSON message back for this. So it seems that what OpenAI have implemented is actually probably something along the lines of JSON form. So this is a thing that you can use on open source models to basically force certain tokens, force the probability of certain tokens to increase, allowing you then when you're doing structured JSON to increase the probability of those tokens coming up which means that you're basically going to get a lot better JSON response. Now, we know that OpenAI had mentioned this was something that they were looking at. So it does seem that JSON mode might be the implementation of that. Another thing that they've changed in here is the new function calling. So it seems that the new function calling is far more robust than it was before. And you can also have a lot more functions to call in here, where that was something that you would often get you know, errors before in the past. Now you can get a, a, quite a number of these in here. So it's interesting also that they're now referring to these as tools in here. So that we're seeing some sort of changes in the description to this. And this kind of fits in with the Assistant API. So I'll talk about the function calling more when I talk about the Assistance API in here. But here's a, a very simple example of where you can basically get it to call a function. So here is the function defined. This is from the OpenAI examples that they've put out here. And so I've gone around and just played around with that a little bit and printing out at various steps what's going on uh, so that you can have a look at it. And you'll see that once it gets a response from that function, it can then pass that back in to the completions API. And you could then use that to generate a natural language out, etc. So this is one of the things that is really crucial to making high quality agents and to be able to rely on the output of the GPT models to be able to give you information about functions, doing lots of things in relation to JSON and tools as well. So this should be really nice for helping to improve some of the things that people have been trying to do with some of the more modern versions of React, etc. All right, let's jump into now the multimodality stuff here. So it turns out this is actually quite simple to do. So I've basically just set, given it a prompt. I want a room full of cats all meditating in a circle. We pass this in. We pass in the, the size that we want. So we could uh, change the aspect ratio if we wanted to do that. And then you'll see that it, what it actually does is it generates on their server and it gives us a URL back. So that URL, we can then go and get it. In this case, I'm downloading it and I'm showing it put in a little bit of code to be able to scale it to the size I want. And so you can see now I've got my room of meditating cats. Now, this is where the fun sort of starts to happen. So what I thought would be fun is to then take this image that it's generated out and feed that into GPT-V. So the next up, I'm using the, the GPT-4V model, a vision preview model. I and I'm passing in the prompt, describe what's in this image in detail as a story. So I'm going to ask it, hey, what's going on in here as a story? I, and you'll see that sure enough, uh, it'll go off. It, it takes a little bit of time to do it, not too long, but then it's able to come back and give me a full story. So you can see this story that I've got here of in a harmonious room bathed in a warm glow of morning sun, the mysterious and enchanting gathering unfolds. Two dozen cats, each with unique coats. And you know what? I, at this stage, I don't want to read this out. 
really, I want a nice voiceover to do this. And this is where the TTS comes in. So now I can just take that, that text that I've got here. I can pick a voice. So the voice that I picked was this voice called Onyx. Unfortunately, the voices are different than you get with uh, ChatGPT+. It seems like you can't get uh, some of those voices. Uh, and then I basically just tell it, okay, I want you to go through and turn this story into a nice sort of narration. And now we've basically downloaded that as an MP3 and we can play it. In a harmonious room bathed in the warm glow of the morning sun, a mysterious and enchanting gathering unfolds. Two dozen cats, each with its own unique coat patterns and colors, sit poised and attentive. They form an almost perfect circle upon a large woven mat that stretches across the wooden floor, a pattern suggesting order and unity among them. The room is cozy. Okay, you can get the sort of gist of where that's going. Have a play with the notebook. You can listen to the whole thing. It is very uh, well done. I must say that the TTS that they're doing it seems to be on par with things like uh, Soundstorm from Google and Valley from uh, Microsoft. I don't know exactly what model that they're using, but it really delivers very realistic audio for this. The other cool thing is once you actually have done this, you own the recording of this. Any of these multimodalities that you generate with OpenAI, apparently you own uh, the rights to. The last thing I'm going to cover just very briefly in here is the whole idea of deterministic outputs. So, like I mentioned, this is perhaps not one of the sexy things, but it is certainly uh, something that's very useful for when you want to debug things and see, are you getting the same uh, response back? So the key uh, sort of things here is that you're passing in a C to the actual uh, model for this, and this can just be an integer that you pass in, and this is taken from their examples. And then with different seeds, you can generate different puts using the exact same prompt but you can go back to a particular seed for this as well. So here we can see the comparison of different puts and seeing what's going on there. You can have a play with the different seeds for yourself and see what you're going to get out there as well. So on top of the new API changes and stuff that they made, they also introduced a bunch of tools which are kind of like developer low-code tools or no-code tools. And this is the whole idea of making my GPTs. So this is what they're defining as being your own assistant. There's a whole system to be able to do this using the ChatGPT Plus uh, user interface for doing this. Currently, OpenAI has made a bunch of these that you can try out yourself. And you'll see that these can have data analysis turned on. They can have browsing turned on. When you actually create them, you can choose what you want to have on or off. And you'll be able to publish these to a store. Uh, for this, or you'll be able to just use them yourself. So this does seem to be a pretty cool feature of the, that they've added. So just as people can do this in the chat at GPT plus uh, UI, you can also come in and do this in the platform API. So if you've got you know, access to this, we can add in some functions in here. We can turn on things like code interpreter. We can also upload files for doing rag and stuff directly into this. So I'm going to save that for uh, another video, but for now, go and have a play with the uh, GPT-4 API if you've got access to it. There's a lot of cool things that you can do now, a lot of fun things that you can do with the images, with the TTS, with doing a whole bunch of things around that. Anyway, as always, if you found it useful, please click like on the video. I will talk to you in the next video. Where we'll probably go for a deep dive of looking at how to create assistance with the OpenAI API. I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.